Hi, Angie here from Crafts at Home. Welcome back to this video series where I'm going to be featuring the outer quilting from Hache Partworks. Hopefully you will have completed issue 21 and have your first six blocks joined and all others sashed waiting to be joined in later issues. With this issue we'll be making the whirly gig block and you'll be receiving the blossom, daisy and blue gingham fabrics. Before you begin, iron all of your fabric so it's nice and flat. It will make it easier to work with and improve the overall finish of your quilt. As the blocks continue to increase in difficulty, it's important you read through the instructions and make sure your cutting layouts are correct. Take notice, as with this issue you need to flip a template over for multiple pieces. Let's start marking and cutting. So as you can see, my blossom, my blue gingham and my daisy fabrics are all marked out. Now when you do the blue gingham and the daisy, remember to flip your template over in between doing them so you get one facing one way and one facing the other. That way you won't have the problem with the fabrics not matching correctly. So I'm going to move these two to the side and cut the blossom. So I'm going to go along this long side first. Again, it's just a case of putting your ruler up against the edge and a nice long cut. The one thing I will say is I still keep in all of my off cuts that are large enough. That one I wouldn't keep, but that one I would, just so I've got some extra. And that could also be for a stitch saver or for a piece if I need it cutting differently. So I'm just going to cut this up here. And then cut them into the smaller triangles. So I'm just going to piece them all together now because I'm going to trim the ends off. And there's our four triangles. So I'm going to carry on and cut these two fabrics out and I'll see you back here soon. So I've laid all my pieces out as the finished block will be. Now with this one it's quite simple to see how it's going to finish and because the way that the pieces all go together they line up really nicely. The first step that I've done is I've just marked six millimetres or a quarter of an inch from each of my edges there. So I've got the cross going over in the middle. This is because we're going to be doing inset seams again on this block. So I've done those on all four of the blossom. And the first step that you want to do is turn the yellow over onto the blue check. So you want to line everything up. Just make sure it matches really nicely. And then pop a couple of pins in. Make sure that you go across 
this diagonal here and not the long straight edge. So that's the first one. Again, yellow over onto the blue. We are working with a bias edge here, so you just have to be a little bit more careful that you don't pull the fabric. Just make sure everything lines up nicely. Again, yellow onto the blue. Now the corner I'm actually matching up first is the centre point of the yellow with the corner of the blue. And that will make sure that when you go from the edge to the middle, you've got your inset seam perfect along that edge. All the outside edges we can tidy up later when we come to put the sashing on. But it's important to get all the middles matching nicely. So again, yellow onto blue and match up to that corner there. It is very tempting to match this point up first. Let me say I'm a couple of millimetres out on my edge there. But if I did do that one first, it wouldn't match in the centre and it would look all wrong. So now I've got all four of those pinned. I'm going to pop my reds to the side for now. And I'll see you over at the sewing machine in a moment. So with these pieces, we're going to be sewing from the point corner there, all the way down to where these crosses intersect. We'll be taking it back a couple of stitches and then going forward back to that cross just to reinforce it for the inset seam. So as usual, you mark it up with your quarter of an inch seam. So on. And we'll take the pin out and carry on. And we'll take the second pin out. four stitches, forward four, then lift up my foot, lift up my needle with my automatic button and pull through. Now I'm going to set my needle back down and put the next piece in, exactly the same as what we've just done. If you wanted to see a close-up of sewing and reinforcing inset seams, you can go to the Baby Blocks video and there's a detailed close-up on there of how to sew up to and reinforce an inset seam. So again, I've done to my end and reinforced. Needle up, foot up, and just pull your thread through. Needle down, and next piece in.
go. Now what I'm going to do is take my stitch saver from the beginning and just set that through just so it finishes with a piece of material in. And snip that off. So now I've got all of my secured ends and I'll show you how to trim all those off over at the ironing board. So I've now sewn my first four seams and I'm just going to trim these apart. So I've done these two already and I just snip as close to the fabric as I can and then I take the ends and snip from the edge. So the next step we're going to be doing is pinning on the reds. So open your first one up and place in your red. So you do exactly like we did before. Just pop that in. Corners matching up there. And then because we've already marked on the yellow, if we pin there, and pin closer to the edge. So if we stretch that out you'll see we go from this edge here go forward and do a reinforcement all the way down here and you stop again just where the pencil lines meet which is where your stitches across here will meet as well. And then as we open that back, that's ready then to do the matching one down there, which I'll show you through later. So I'm just going to quickly pin all of these ready. So again, just push that apart, put the red in and fold it up. And then match your seams to pin. So just keep on matching everything. And then I go on and do the final one. So just have it open nicely, match your red in. Turn over, tidy up that edge and make sure it matches nicely. And then pop a couple of pins in. Make sure you've got everything nice and tidy because you are working on a bias edge. So just to recap with the sewing, you start here at the point 
go all the way down following the line till you reach your cross of your pencil lines there. Now when you meet that, go back three or four stitches and then go forward just to reinforce so you've got a nice edge to start with. So I'm going to go and sew these and I'll be back in a moment. So now I've got these last edges sewn up. I'm just going to trim those two edges off there. So to match them up into their squares, if you open it up, you'll start to see that it's coming together, but we need to do this seam in between the red and the blue gingham. So the way I find easiest is just start by pinching together those two sides. Put your finger in and bring it out. So if you pull there and just fold everything back and then match up your edges. So at this stage just pop a couple of pins through And just make sure that that yellow piece stays out and flat like that and these fold back. So when you're going to start sewing you can choose which side you find is easier for you. I'm going to go from that centre piece making sure before I start that everything is folding out of the way. So I'm going to start from where the stitching finishes there, do a reinforcement stitch and then stitch to the end. So I'm going to match up these four. Another way is to have it open like that and just press down and flip open. just easier for you whatever you prefer there's no set wrong or right as long as you match up those two seams just make sure that everything is running square as well there we go so I'm going to pop the first pin in here second pin in and I said I'm going to make sure that everything's folded out pop it into my sewing machine place my needle down where my stitching stops there do a couple of reinforcement stitches at that point and then sew on to the end so I'm going to pin these two and then I'm going to go over to the sewing machine and sew them up and I'll see you back here in a moment for the ironing. So I've already ironed two but I'm going to show you how to do all the seams on these ones. So if you lay it down there's a natural way for the red to go flat and we want to keep that but then you want to make the yellow sit flat on the blue so just Fold it back and then fold it back over and you'll find it lies really nicely. So if you start on the red, just gently pull the two fabrics away so you've got a nice seam there. And then just gently go over the yellow again, pulling very lightly at the blue 
just to make sure that the fabric comes out nicely. So I'll repeat with this one to make sure that, that yellow seam there lies flat and then gets folded over by the red. So again, just ease the fabric out and steam as you go. It's from now that you can really see your block start to come together. So the next thing we're going to be doing is making these squares into two rectangles and just choose your two opposite sides, turn and pin. Now I'm going to make sure that the middle corners which are those two meet really nicely. So I'm just going to pin that edge there and then match that up and pin again. I'm also going to put a third pin in the middle just to keep that seam down as well. So that's my first two blocks pinned. Now I'm just going to do these two. So again the corners which are going to be up for the middle corner to match perfectly. And pin that. And then just make sure that the rest lies nice and squarely before you pop the other pins in. Again, I've got that seam there, so I'm just going to make sure that that lies flat with an extra pin. So I'm just going to go and sew these two seams and I'll be back in a moment. So now I've got those two seams sewn together, I'm just going to iron them open. And you want to iron towards the long side of the red blossom and away from the red blossom and blue gingham. So just lie that face up, set your seam and iron open. Because the red's quite a stiff fabric, I'm just giving it that extra press just to make sure that it lies really nicely. So the next point now is to flip them over and marry up this middle seam. So because of the way we've just pressed, you've actually got a really deep nesting seam. So just take your time to make sure that that feels nice and tight. If you need to, just pull back and double check. That to me feels really good. Because they're thick fabrics as well, I'm just going to pin quite close to either side to make sure that they stay together. And then just pin the other sides. So 
If you wanted to put any extra pins in to make sure that your seams stay down, you can do. I'm not going to because of the way that this runs through my machine. So I'll just go and sew this one and I'll see you back here in a moment. So I've just sewn it along that final seam now and double checking that all of my seams have stayed nice and flat. I then check in the middle to make sure that my seams run nicely and they really do. So the final step with this one now is to iron open and flat the middle seam. So just make sure you tease the first part apart and then with the toe of your iron you can go in and just open that flat. As usual just make sure that all of your other seams are staying flat at the same time and you're not disturbing anything that you've ironed previously. So I'm going to turn around and go from the other edge. Again I'm just going to tease that apart first. And then go in just with the toe of my iron, pressing it open. And then from the front, just a nice all over iron. And there we go. That is the whirly gig block. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video and the whirly gig block that we've created. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you'll be notified of our new videos. Further information about Crafts at Home, the Crafts at Home forum, the art of quilting and hache artworks can be found on the social media pages which are listed in the description. Don't forget to join us next week for issue 23 where we'll be making the old maids puzzle block. Bye for now.